since my video showing me actually pre-ordering a BYD Add03, which is going to be BYD's world electric car. There's been a lot of questions on the channel. I've had a lot of emails and messages asking me for confirmation of details, battery details, warranty details, spec of the car, will this happen, will that happen? I don't have answers to every question, but I definitely have answers to some of them. Here is what they are. Hello, my friends, and welcome to the Electric Viking. My name is Sam Evans. I'm coming to you here from Melbourne, Australia. And thank you for subscribing to the channel. It's great to have all you new subscribers. Thank you for being a long-term subscriber to the channel. I really appreciate you being here and supporting the channel. So BYD, well, they plan on building 1.5 million electric vehicles this year. Now, apparently around about 800,000 of those will be pure EVs. Around about 700,000 will be plug-in hybrids. Those are the numbers that I'm hearing out of China. Don't know if that's true or not, but that's what I'm hearing. Now, if you're not already aware, I've pre-ordered a BYD EN Plus. It's called the Addo 3 here in Australia. Maybe they'll call it that in your country as well. I'm not sure. But BYD currently is selling their electric vehicles in many, many countries worldwide. They're planning on expanding. They're doing that now. So they've gone to India, Philippines, a few South American countries, Australia, going to the UK, going to Europe as well. They're currently selling Norway also. So they're coming. It's happening slower because, well, one key reason, they have an enormous amount of demand in China. They're not, they're not even able to satisfy that demand. They are the most trending electric car company in China. Really comes down to one key issue here, that is affordability. Their electric cars cost the same as gas vehicles in China. So obviously it's a no-brainer to go and buy one. That's why people are doing it. Makes sense. That's why I did it. So what's going on with the battery? Well, some of you have asked about the warranty. In China, BYD actually has a lifetime warranty, as in the warranty is forever. The reason being is they believe their blade battery, LFP battery chemistry, will actually give people more than at least a million kilometers of use. And they're saying that Battery degradation, even at a million kilometers, will be no less than down to 60% of original capacity. That's a million kilometers. Some people are saying a million miles, I'm hearing, but I think it's actually a million kilometers. So that's the warranty that they have in China. In Australia, when I was when I interviewed a representative from BYD here, they said the warranty would be 500,000 kilometers with a minimum of 60% of original capacity. Well, now they've officially reduced that figure to 160,000 kilometers and eight years. So yeah, it's still good, but it's nowhere near as good as what it is in China. They've said that they've reduced this warranty to in, in order to reduce their costs. So I don't know if that was true. It doesn't sound like a good excuse to me, to be honest. It sounds like they're saying, well, we don't really believe BYD in China. But I mean, really, if you go to forums, you can see what people are getting. You can see that taxis in China using BYD blade batteries have lasted for over a million kilometers, no problems at all. So it does appear as though the batteries are fine. And I think BYD in Australia should just stand by the product and offer the warranty they originally told me that they were gonna offer. But anyway, that's what they've decided to do. So there's that information for you. Now, what about the pricing model? Well, EV Direct, who are the distributors here in Australia for BYD, confirm there'll be no hiking up or bargaining on prices like there is in the US and Australia or increasing prices above the MSRP for the BYD Addo 3 or any of the cars they sell, even though they will be selling them through dealers. Now, apparently they'll be selling them at a set cost. The MSRP is the MSRP in, in exactly the same way that Tesla do. At the same time, BYD in China has announced it has started construction of another battery factory with FAW. Now, FAW will be their joint partner, that, and this battery factory will enable BYD to produce 1 million EVs per year just from that factory. Now, BYD have at least, I think, about seven other battery factories in China. So this is just one part of their puzzle piece of aiming to produce 3.5 million EVs in 2025. Now, previously, in the past, you could only order BYD here in Australia through the EV Direct website, but that will change in future as they'll have a distributor here who you'll be able to go in, walk into the shop and actually test drive the vehicle and order it through them for the standard retail price. No bargaining, no haggling. It's just the price is the price. Now, the reason BYD are trying to do this is they don't want to be going through the issues that General Motors, Ford, Kia, Hyundai, Mercedes, even Toyota, 
have been having in places such as Australia, the US, Canada. I don't know about Europe. Let me know if you're in Europe and you've been having the same issues. I don't know if that's happening there or not. With dealers just charging these ridiculous prices, taking their order and then saying, yeah, the car's here, but by the way, the price has now increased by $20,000. They're trying to avoid that by having direct prices where you just pay the price, that's it. No arguing, no haggling. I like that idea. It takes a lot of stress out of the deal. It means you don't walk out of the dealership and go, did I just pay way more than someone else or did I pay less or I feel like I've been violated because I thought the price was the price and now it's different. I really think that model's got to change. It's ridiculous. I mean, do you ever walk into a mobile phone shop and just say, oh, can I buy that phone? And they say, yeah, you can buy it. We'll order it in for you. And then it comes into the store and they say, oh, by the way, it's 20% more now. Does that ever happen? Really? It's a joke. Getting back to BYD. If you want to see me actually order the vehicle, see the price, all those sorts of things, I'll put a link in the description below to that video. One other question I've had is, is the car standard? What does it come with standard? Well, I don't know all the features, but I do talk about them in the video. I do outline the actual features in the video, but here in Australia, they don't have any option packs at all. The car is the car. They're claiming that they're offering the top model. They're not actually offering the top model. I think it's the mid-range spec because the top model in China has a 15.7 inch screen. The, the screen size here in Australia will be 12.7 inches. So it's actually not the top model, but it does seem to have a fairly high level of specifications. Now, apparently it will use BYD's proprietary D-Link system, which will be able to be connected to both Android and Apple phones, and it will use a whole range of technology features, including the ability to upgrade the car software over the air, and that will come standard. Now, this is what the distributor said. It's really an extension of all the apps that you have on your phone, Obviously there are safety features built in, so you can't be playing with apps or so on whilst you're driving, but to have an extension of your mobile device integrated into the car via the D-Link system is really a step forward for us. Now I've got to make the point here that in China, it's extremely important that the infotainment system can be upgraded constantly because in China, that's just what they expect. They expect that it should be like a mobile phone where you can, you can get new apps, you can do different things on it. It's not like Legacy Auto where they just think, oh, here's this infotainment system. It is what it is. You're stuck with it. Too bad. It's not going to change. And in 10 years time, it'll be the same that it was 10 years ago. Pretty much most cars now being sold in China now have these infotainment systems that can constantly, constantly be changed and upgraded and added apps to and developed the same way developers work on mobile phone platforms now. That's very much the way it is in China. Now, right now, there's only three color choices here in Australia. BYD is saying that at some point in time, yes, there will be more color choices. They don't say when it's going to happen. Now, the Driven.io reports that the new Blade Battery Factory is a key factor in meeting demand for BYD's electric vehicle expansion worldwide. This will include a 1,500 per month vehicle capacity just for Australia. And apparently they're going to have enough batteries to be able to supply those vehicles. Now, to be honest, I don't buy that. I don't think that's actually true. I think that's that's like wishful thinking. If we can get 1,500 vehicles per month here, that would be a miracle. I mean, seriously, that's literally 18,000 EVs per year. That's more than Tesla sold here in Australia last year. And Tesla had well, like 75% of the EV market here in Australia. I honestly think that's not going to happen. If it does, wow, that's amazing. It's fantastic. But I think there's just too much demand right now in China, in Europe, for us to get that many electric cars. And it's just not enough. When BYD had that new factory, when that's been built in 18 months time and been ramped up in two years time, yeah, then we'll have plenty of EVs. So will the rest of the world though. Now, currently BYD is actually the second largest manufacturer of batteries in China. It installed, I think around about 27 gigawatt hours. That accounted for a 16.2% market share. And that's a pretty big increase of what they did last year. I think we're going to see a doubling of that number again this year. But this new factory will give them around about another 50 to 60 gigawatt hours of capacity, doubling that number again, just from the one factory. Now, apparently the Australian spec model will also miss out on one feature that's available in the top spec model in China. That is APA automatic parking. Now, outside of that and the smaller screen size that we're getting, I can't see any differences to the premium model in China, but correct me if I'm wrong. Now, for me, ultimately, 
I, as you know, I'm a fan of BYD. And the key reason that I'm a fan of BYD is because they've been able to transition so quickly from being a 50-50 electric and ICE vehicle company into being purely a plug-in hybrid and electric vehicle company. You know, 1%, 1 or 2% of the vehicles they sold over the last couple of months were ICE vehicles. In other words, ICE for them is dead, it's finished. And I love their aggressiveness. I love the fact that they're not just talking about it, but they're actually doing it right now. They're building the factories incredibly quickly and they're aiming for three and a half million EVs to be delivered in 2025. Now, if they could deliver that month, that number in 2025, which I think they can from what I'm seeing from what they're doing now every month, every single month they're expanding their production. It's amazing. I mean, for seven straight months last year, they beat their sales by 10,000 in terms of EV sales every single month for seven straight months. That's incredible. No one else did that. Tesla was incredible in the fourth quarter of last year. But that sales trajectory from BYD is, in, is just unprecedented. Tesla and BYD are clearly ramping up EV manufacturing and sales quicker than anyone else. And I talk about that in my video where I predict who's going to win the next decade in 2030. I'll put a link in the description below to that video. Now, let me know if you've got any more questions about BYD. I'll do my best to find out anything I can for you. I will be test driving a BYD, a couple, hopefully a couple of BYD vehicles very soon. Thanks for watching the channel and I'll see you again on the next video. Bye-bye.